Chris with RC Worst here. Today we're going to talk about uh, selecting a sump pump. So when it comes to selecting a sump pump, it can easily be overwhelming when you get to the store and realize you've got t dozens um, or at least multiple choices in most cases. So um, we'll just kind of go over some of the ins and outs on things to think about when it comes to replacing a sump pump um, and also talk about some of the common um, common decisions that you may have to make uh, when you're sitting there making that decision. So um, the first thing that kind of comes up quite often in conversation is, um, you know, oh, my sump pump died. Should I just replace it with the same pump that I had previously? Um, and that's kind of a loaded question because you've got to take into account a number of different factors. Um, you know, the cost of the sump pump, how long the sump pump lasted, um, as well as whether or not the performance was, was kind of up to what you need. Um, in some cases, kind of by performance, I'm, I'm meaning like the, the overall pump's ability to either keep up or potentially um, kind of over pump the application. Um, so those are all kind of different things to consider when, when uh, replacing a sump pump, but when it comes to replacing it with the same model, if you were happy with the, the amount of time it lasted, you know, if you got like five, 10, 20, 30 years, so you know, I, I hear about crazy situations like that out of a sump pump and that pump still produced, I'd have a hard time not replacing it with the same pump. Um, and that kind of ties right into a question that I get pretty regularly when you're looking at a pump, you know, how long should it last? And, and, and there's really not a, a perfectly defined answer for that because of all of the variables that go into an application. Um, but that, that's kind of a loaded question as well. But um, I did write a article on that uh, a while back and I'll put the link in the description below so that you can take a look at that article. I think it gives a pretty good overview of what to expect in terms of just generic pump life and kind of the different factors that go into that. So, um, and then also what comes up sometimes is uh, when you go to replace an existing sump pump, what if the pump's no longer available? Um, you know, you were happy with the performance, but the pump's no longer available or discontinued for whatever reason. Um, and that, that's kind of more or less what we're going to get into today. So the, the obvious choice, of course, if you don't want to make the decisions and, and kind of roll through um, all of the, the different factors and things to consider, you can always pick up the phone and give us a call. We're happy to look at your old pump, go over the application with you, um, and then kind of help you pick a pump. But for all the do-it-yourselfers out there, um, thumbs up to, to getting it done. And that's kind of what this video is going to be about is is just more or less the things to consider and so forth. So uh, the first and most important step with selecting a sump pump is going to be to familiarize yourself with the application. And, and by that, I mean, I mean, you've got to know um, what the source is. Is, is this groundwater? Is this uh, water from the washing machine? Is this water from a sink drain down in the basement? Um, and, and kind of consider not only the source, but kind of the water quality is, is there anything in the water that, that may cause problems for the pump? Do you have a lot of uh, soaps, chemicals, fats, greases, um, and all those types of things are going to contribute uh, to the decisions that you make when you're, when you're selecting a pump or, or alternatively going to contribute to the untimely demise of the pump. So um, another thing to think about when it comes to the, uh, the selection of the sump pump is going to be um, the anticipated usage. So uh, to kind of, that kind of encapsulates both how frequently it's going to be used as well as uh, kind of the overall volume of, of fluid, uh, assumably water in most sump applications that it's actually going to um, need to pump. So you've got to kind of take that into account. Uh, and then that that kind of ties us into the last really important, really crucial factor is, is the system head. So um, pump head, you, you may be familiar with it and you may be thinking, wait, what's that? Um, so we're going to have a video that we put together um, as well as some information that we're going to get down in the description that, that overviews pump head. So just to give a quick overview of pump head, it is basically a measurement of the amount of pressure 
required to successfully deliver the fluid pumped at the desired flow. So um, that's really all there is to, to pump head in a nutshell. Of course, it gets a little more complicated than that uh, when you look at the individual factors and so forth. So check below for that info. Um, once you understand kind of the ins and outs and uh, are pretty familiar with the application, what the pump's being used for, what it's pumping, um, etc., then we kind of have to go out and, and find the right pump for the job. Now, the right pump for the job is not a one-size-fits-all one situation because a one-horsepower pump is not going to be exactly identical in performance to another one-horsepower pump. You know, there, there may be hundreds, possibly even thousands of, of one horsepower pumps on the market and quite often those pumps have varying performances and uh, varying characteristics that, that contribute to them being more effective in different applications. So um, you just kind of want to keep in mind uh, the, the right pump for the job is going to offer a balance of upfront costs and long-term life cycle costs, including maintenance and repair. Um, additionally, it's going to optimize energy efficiency by balancing your energy consumption with your reliability factor. There's, there's always an efficiency trade-off with reliability um, and efficiency. So um, you kind of got to look at the, the, the details of the, the application and, and make your call based on what you need. Um, and then also the right pump for the job is going to maximize the overall life of the pump. You're going to use the strong points of the pump um, coupled with the specific details of your application to have a, a very close match that's going to basically capitalize on the best of both and, and give you a longer life. Um, so one other thing that, that I kind of run into quite often is, you know, I may quote a pump for someone that, that may only be a couple hundred dollars and, and they may have expected a significantly higher price because perhaps their local plumber gave them that higher price um, or they shopped around and found some higher prices. But the reality is, is price isn't really a factor when it comes to selecting the right pump. I mean, to some extent, yes, but um, as a default rule, the most expensive pump does not mean the best pump. Um, so instead, what you need to understand and look at is the pump features and uh, try to identify one that's in line with the needs of your application. So uh, understanding the qualities of... Um, of the particular pump and the construction materials that are used is important in um, selecting a pump that's capable of the job. So for example, a cast iron pump in a saltwater application would undoubtedly fail very rapidly compared to uh, perhaps a bronze or a stainless steel pump. Um, now in a lot of cases, bronze uh, marine pumps are considered ideal for saltwater applications. Um, or at least saline pumping applications, but uh, they're often quite expensive. So what, uh, what some people have done and, and what things that I've seen in the industry is, is in some cases people will use like an inexpensive stainless steel pump because stainless steel tends to have uh, a higher level of resistance to that corrosion than per se a cast iron pump, but it's not going to be anywhere near as expensive as a bronze fitted pump. Now, of course, the construction of the pump or, or the, the out exterior construction material of the pump isn't the only contributing factor, um, specifically like in saltwater applications, because saltwater is kind of a tricky one and, uh, and not a lot of pumps really, unless they specifically say saltwater, are intended for that. So um, just keep that in mind. So, um, so let's take a look kind of at, at the pumps that I've got sitting in front of me to kind of gain a little bit of an understanding as to what we can expect or at least some of the things to keep an eye out for. So um, the, the, the key things that you want to take note of, of course, is going to be, um, you know, what switch type does the pump have? We've got the, the wide angle type switches, which are kind of renowned for reliability and also the ability to be replaced. Um, you know, I, I would say on a pumping system, the thing that does 
a large amount of the work is, is the switch is because it has to constantly move up and down and make contact. So that, that kind of tends to be a little bit of a weak point on uh, pumping systems. And it tends to be nice to have a, 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 a pump that the switch can be easily changed out. So if we look at uh, a couple of examples here, we've got uh, this Zoller sump pump and this Myers sump pump. Uh, both pumps have a pretty similar switch and it is a built-in switch, which it's extremely convenient to have that built-in switch uh, when it comes to installation and replacing the pump because you don't have to mess with the switch at all. Um, and you've only got one cord for the power, which is, which is nice. You use one cord to deal with, uh, especially if you're you know, running it through a splice box or, or out of the basin, you just have less to deal with and that's kind of nice. Uh, but unfortunately that is kind of a weak point on the pump where if the switch goes bad, you've either got to break into the pump and, and disassemble it and take it apart and put a new switch in there, um, or you've got to get a whole new pump and that's not convenient. Whereas uh, a pump like one of these or one of these, where this pump here doesn't even include a switch, you just buy that separately to make it easy. Of course, it is sold in vari variants that include that switch, um, or this pump here that comes with the switch, but it's not coming out of the top of the pump. It utilizes a piggyback, grab that here. It utilizes the piggyback plug, which is which is an extremely nice feature with a sump pump because it's also going to give you the added advantage of being able to troubleshoot. Um, so if one day your pump's not working, you just unplug your switch, plug your pump in and see if it fires up. And that's kind of step one to, to understanding what's going on with the pump. So that's, that's kind of an, an, ad, an added advantage. Um, a lot of times you will find that the, the floats that aren't built into the pump um, you may pay a little bit more for the pump, but I, I would say in my experience, it's worth it. Um, another thing to kind of consider, like I mentioned, is like a cast iron pump is, is most commonly thought of as the, the higher end of pumps because you've got a lot of pumps with like a plastic volute or in some cases, uh, the entire pump is gonna be plastic, um, which I don't have any of those here today. Um, but the cast iron pumps are excellent for uh, thermal displacement where they basically act as a heat sink for the motor. So they're gonna really uh, be effective at uh, pulling the heat away from the motor for those applications where the pump maybe needs to run a little bit longer um, or you know it may have to actually cycle a little bit more frequently. It's gonna be able to get rid of that heat more effectively um, with the amount of cast iron that it's got. But when you look at like a pump like what I've got over here, this pump has a plastic volute and uh, the lower portion of the pump is plastic. It's got a cast iron housing and then a thermoplastic top as well. Now, they, they kind of did the combination effect because the, the, the plastic volute, one, it kind of makes the pump a little bit less costly um, and saves on, on cost because that portion of it doesn't contact the motor necessarily. So it's pretty negligible, the, uh, the heat dissipation or the, or the thermal advantage that you get associated with a, a metal volute. Now, of course, it's not gonna be as tough and robust um, you know, from pulling it out and setting it down. And uh, the thing to kind of consider between the two pumps here is this pump's ex quite heavy compared to this pump which is probably only about 10 or 15 pounds. This one's probably closer to like 50 pounds. I don't have the weight offhand, um, but it's just really nice to kind of see a combination where you're gonna have some pretty effective uh, heat displacement from this because of the cast iron body, um, but then it's also kind of somewhat inexpensive. So it's a good in-between pump uh, for pretty mild sump applications, and it's gonna be pretty affordable as well. Um, then, you, you know, we look over here at the stainless steel pump that we've got at the front and stainless steel is going to be providing you with uh, some pretty optimal corrosion resistance. It really doesn't get much better in terms of corrosion resistance when it comes to a stainless steel pump. So that's very nice uh, when it comes to maximizing the, the pump life, especially for applications where uh, the pump may not turn on very frequently. Um, you know, sometimes w when you get into the spring season, the pump runs pretty hard and then you get into maybe summer and, 
and the pump doesn't turn on until spring again. You know, those, those types of situations do exist out there and uh, having a pump with a high amount of corrosion resistance is gonna be pretty suitable for those applications because the pump sitting in, in standing water uh, for long periods of time, that water tends to get a little bit hard um, and it can kind of contribute to that, that pump eventually, um, you know, kind of corroding or, or getting rusted and, and so forth. So I also wanted to kind of talk about the overall weight of the pump as a factor because that, that does kind of come into play. And a lot of times when it comes to pumps, weight can be uh, in some ways an indicator of, of um, a higher value pump. Uh, for example, in applications where the pump needs to run for very long periods of time, you need a pump that has uh, a higher rated level of insulation inside of the motor. And typically if you need a pump that runs for very long periods of time, you're looking for a pump that's rated as continuous duty. And uh, a continuous duty pump has a motor inside with um, an insulation that's, that's a higher grade than a pump that's intended to cycle. So you wanna keep an eye out for that. But in my example of weight, if we had two identical pumps, one that was rated for cycling and then one, one that was continuous duty rated, the continuous duty rated pump is gonna be heavier. It's gonna have heavier bearings. It's gonna have more, um, uh, it's, it's motor windings are gonna have a higher grade of insulation and the overall construction material on the pump is going to be heavier because of what it's intended to, to do. So um, that's kind of to some degree how weight can be a contributing factor to selecting a pump. And um, other than that, I mean, there's not a whole heck of a lot else to consider when selecting a sump pump. Uh, your, your, your chemical resistances and so forth, if, if it gets to that technical degree of non-standard applications, I, I would honestly recommend giving us a call so that we can attempt to, to find some pumps for you that may have some, some more customized options in terms of seal material or, or anything like that for those real specialty applications. But as a general rule of thumb, um, I think that we've kind of covered a lot of the main points to consider when selecting a sump pump. So uh, I wanna thank you for joining me today and uh, be sure to like and subscribe the video to the video if you found it useful and um, want to get some more of that great content that we're putting out here. And also, if you have any questions on what we went over today, we would love to hear from you down in the comments below. Um, any, any great questions that we get, we're going to be uh, potentially featuring some future videos. So thanks for watching and uh, we'll catch you next time.